everybody, welcome to the Medical Projects YouTube channel. If you are new around here, my name is Olivia and I'm now a third year medical student, which is crazy to say out loud, but I'm a third year medical student and here on this YouTube channel, we create content to give you our best bits of advice to ensure that you get your dream spot at medical school. And I'm here to showcase what medical school is all about and let you know all the details so that you can decide whether it is right for you. So if you like the sound of that, do make sure you click that subscribe button and turn the notification bell on so that you can be notified every time we post. And also make sure to go and follow us on all of our social media accounts because we love interacting with you guys and we're happy to answer any questions or queries that you may have. So for today's video, I thought I'd take a little bit of a break from the UCAT videos because I know you guys are all revising hard and you're probably sick of hearing about the UCAT. But today I thought we'd talk about something that I feel like I'm pretty qualified to talk about, and that is how to get into King's College London to study medicine. Interestingly, loads of you guys have been telling us when we've been running our courses and interacting with you on Instagram that you really want to apply to King's. So I thought I'd put this video out there to tell you my top tips based on my own application experience and I've also searched the internet to find any bits of advice and statistics based around the application process at King's. So if you like the sound of that, do keep watching. So a lot of these tips that I'm going to share with you apply to many different medical schools, not just King's, but specifically the London medical schools because they are known to be particularly competitive. I think the reasons for that is because one, it's a hot spot, a lot of people want to be in London and the teaching quality is really really excellent because you have access to so many incredible teaching hospitals and various facilities that come with the perks of living in London. Now I for one never in a million years thought I would get into medical school at King's because one it was a London based university and two I felt like King's was a very reputable med school and I just didn't think I'd get in. I know it's really really hard to get in anywhere any medical school you go to is really competitive and the competition is fierce but King's for me was a bit of a sort of shot in the dark I kind of thought I'm not gonna get in but here we are they haven't kicked me out just yet, so... So for the first part of this video, I'm going to start by talking about some of the statistics and entry requirements that King's specifically stipulates they need, and then I'm going to talk about my own application experience and how your pathway into medicine is not necessarily going to be linear. So let's start with A-levels. What do King's say the normal undergraduate applicant needs for their six year programme? Well, you're going to need to have A star AA in your A-levels and you are going to have to take chemistry and biology. Now I often get asked, do I have to take chemistry or do I have to take biology when it comes to applying to medicine? And the answer is that every university says something different. In general, as a rule of thumb, it's a safe bet to take chemistry and biology, but do look into the specific university requirements. So for example, Kings here are saying that they need chemistry and biology, and then other unis will say, you know, we just need biology or we just need chemistry. So do look into that. But since it's Kings we're talking about, you're going to need to do chemistry and biology. For your GCSE grades, you are going to need to have at least a six in English language and maths. And as an additional statistic, do remember that what I'm listing is the minimum minimum requirement, but when I looked into what most people had last year who were successful in their application to King's, most people had five or more GCSEs at grade nine. So it just goes to show that competition is really fierce and make sure you are aiming as high as possible and not just trying to reach that bare minimum requirement. Because the higher you aim and the better you do, the more competitive your application is going to be. Now I thought I'd add this in because it's relevant to me and it might be relevant to some other people if you end up doing a different degree before entering medicine. If you are a biosciences student, such as myself who did biomedical sciences, you need to have a 2-1 in your degree and that replaces the A-level requirement of A star AA. However, if you have a different degree, say for example you have English or history, you're going to have to get a 2-1 and you're also going to have to get AA in chemistry and biology at A-level, which might mean that you have to sit this in your summer holidays and complete your A-levels then. So that's just something to bear in mind if you are a mature student applying to medical school at King's. The next requirement I want to talk about is the U. UCAT exam, the dreaded UCAT exam. So as you know, some universities use UCAT and some universities use the BMAT exam. King's uses UCAT exclusively. And speaking about the UCAT, just another reminder, as I say in most videos, we do have a UCAT crash course and also a masterclass, which is starting really soon. I teach a lot of the classes and it's just a really, really useful one day virtual course. You can do it from the comfort of your home and I will give you all the tips to hit those top UCAT scores so that if you're looking to apply to King's or other London 
London based universities, you definitely will be able to do so. And they say that there really isn't a cutoff, however when I looked for the statistics based on last year's performance and the average UCAT score that successful applicants were getting, the average was actually 702 across the four sections and that is separate from situational judgement. Another thing they said about the UCAT score, which can differ between universities, is that it is the overall average they care about the most not your individual scores in each section. So you know if you end up getting a really low average but you think you know well I smashed verbal reasoning they're unfortunately not going to really take that into account. And they also say that they take situational judgment into account but they don't stipulate what score you should be getting but I would suggest aiming for band one and band two to be safe. As I've said in my previous video often if you get a really really high average so you're hitting that 700 mark but you get a band three or band four in situational judgment certain unis may say that you don't don't get an interview. Now what I thought was quite interesting when I was looking at the admissions criteria is that they give an indication into some of the qualities they want to see that is separate from your academics and this is something that is really really useful because it means you can tailor your personal statement around these things that they're looking for. So they started by saying scholastic activities are very desirable and I thought this was quite interesting because there are some other things that I would have assumed ranked a little bit higher than this but when I think about it, King's is really, really big on kind of like research and debating and getting stuck in with various things. And so it makes sense that they really value scholastic activities. And what they mean by this is things like reading and getting involved with debates and just, you know, reading around subjects, getting involved in some research. Remember that if you're applying to a London based university, these are some of the hubs of research. So they're going to be really impressed if they can see that you're getting stuck into some of your areas of interest. So for example, in my case, I was a little bit lucky because I was applying as a graduate, which meant I was doing a dissertation at the same time. And I think they're really looking for you to be kind of like a keen scientist as well as a keen medic. That's the impression I get anyway. And that's the impression I get whilst we're on the course because we do have to do lots of different projects pertaining to kind of research. Another thing they said is that community activities are very desirable. So if you can do some volunteering in a care home or a hospice or a local hospital, that will be really, really good. And if you can do some charity work, that's also really impressive. They do say that they appreciate that work experience can be difficult to get and if that's the case they do still take into account community activities you've got stuck into which aren't necessarily in the medical field. They've also said that paid or voluntary slash shadowing work is really desirable. So paid work you might choose to be a HCA or maybe you've worked as part of a medical team in some form and then volunteering again you might volunteer in a hospice as I did. I volunteered for over a year and I think when you can show continual commitment that is really 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 impressive and more so than if you've had a week of shadowing on a ward. Even though shadowing on a ward is really cool and it lets you know what life as a doctor is like, it's more impressive if you can show that your work experience has had some form of longevity to it. I'm really sorry the sun is doing the most again. Another thing they've spoken about is what they're looking for in your personal statement which again is nice and transparent and it's really useful because you can tailor your application so that you can hit all those check boxes when it comes to applying to Kings. So they've said they really want to see some commitment so that will be in the form of your work experience and as I said if you can show some long-term commitment that is going to trump any short-term commitments that you've shown and then they've also said that they really want you to have a realistic insight into what medicine is really like. I always say to people not to shy away from discussing some of the less glamorous sides of medicine so things like the fact that your job is going to be very emotionally taxing, you'll probably be working really unsociable hours and you know burnout rates are really really high in the medical profession and I think these are really important topics to cover and also discuss them at length with people you meet on your work experience. So you might choose to talk to a doctor about what has been difficult for them in their career and how they've managed to tackle this and that might give you some ideas about what you could write about when it comes to your own approach in your personal statement. And finally let's talk about shortlisting for the interview. So how do they shortlist you? Well they've said that this is based on a combination of factors. Firstly your predicted or achieved A levels, your GCSEs, your UCAT score, your personal statement and then any other holistic factors. And they're also going to be taking into account your reference which is something you have to obtain from a teacher or a headmaster or someone who knows you well which just tells the admissions tutors that yes this person is the ideal candidate for medical school. So to wrap up the admissions criteria what is the competition really like? Well based on the figures every year there's about 6,000 applicants that apply and there are unfortunately only around 400 to 420 spaces. 
So you can see that the competition is fierce and only about 1,200 to 1,400 are selected for interview. So if you do make it to interview, you are doing really, really well and you've already eliminated many of your competitors. So you should be really proud if you get an interview at all. So I really hope I haven't put you off there. If it's any consolation, I never thought I would get admitted to King's. I just, you know, in some respects I matched the entrance criteria and in others I'm sure I could have been better. But I really think when it comes to King's Medical School, they do take a holistic approach to your application. I've discussed this a lot with a lot of my friends, you know, a lot of them will say, how the heck did I get in? You know, I did not have the UCAT score or I didn't have this or I didn't have that. And they do take everything into account. So try and make sure that your application is strong in all the different areas and not just one specific area. Finally, I'm going to talk about my own experience applying to King's College London so you can get an idea about the sort of timeline and the things that I did. So I ended up applying to King's in my final year of university. So I was finishing up biomedical sciences at Bristol. So I submitted my application by the 15th of October, which is the deadline. I sat my UCAT at the end of July and I got a pretty high score, which I was really proud of. I revised for about four weeks and then I got an invitation for interview on the 19th of November. I felt like this was really quick. I don't know if I was just lucky or what, but it was insane. So that was kind of surprising and I can't believe how it turned out, but I ended up having three consecutive medical school interviews one on the 11th of December, one on the 12th of December, and one on the 13th of December. And my middle one I had was King's. And I remember ringing the admissions office because I was like, you know, I really, really want to go to King's, but I feel like three in three days is insane and I need a gap somewhere. Um, so I rang up and I said, you know, can I move my interview date to a bit later? Because I was also doing my dissertation at the same time and I had like so many deadlines. I just wasn't expecting to have interviews then. I was expecting them to be in like February. Yeah, and they wouldn't let me budget. They said, you can budget, but we can't guarantee that you're going to get an interview if you do that. So I was like, obviously I'm just not gonna do that. Um, so I did my King's interview and they were so, so friendly. And I actually heard back from them on the 18th of December. So just under a week later, which again was insane. I feel like my timeline was just all a bit crunched up and I feel like it perhaps isn't the most representative timeline. But either way, I was really, really happy and that was my journey into King's. Um, I was applying with a predicted first class degree and I did achieve a first class degree. Um, and I was applying with, I think I had seven A stars. So I guess I kind of met the sort of average cutoff you'd expect for the GCSEs because I said they were five A stars. And I think most importantly, I was applying with loads of work experience and lots of long-term work experience. And I really think that's what made me stand out. So that was my application journey. And I hope you also learned lots of tips about how to get into Kings and the sort of things they're looking for. If you do have any more questions about life at Kings or, you know, medical school in general, do leave them below. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and follow us on our social media links and do also also make sure you check out a bunch of our different summer courses we're running and online courses we're running. They're going to really help boost your application and they're going to make you stand out from the rest of the crowd. If you want to be one of those 400 people that get in at King's out of the 6,000 that apply, I really, really recommend checking out the links in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video very soon. Bye!